But when the better comes, there is no reason for the old to remain. The old was there to point us ahead to the new, and it will no longer need to serve that function. In the second place, the whole of the creation now serves as signs that point to spiritual truths. Jesus saw these things as he would say, the kingdom of heaven is like, and he would say, a man sowing his seed is like a pearl of great price, is like a man who has 100 sheep and he loses one and he goes out into the wilderness and finds it. All sorts of pictures are in the creation pointing us to spiritual realities of the kingdom of heaven. But when the kingdom of heaven comes, the old creation with its spiritual pictures will no longer be necessary. The sun and moon, which are for signs and for seasons, will no longer be necessary. We will not have to look at the sun as it rises in the morning and think, that's a picture of the sun of righteousness who arises with healing in his wings because we will have the reality, Jesus Christ, the sun, who comes with healing in his wings. The old will not be necessary. Because the signs won't be necessary any longer. But in the third place, the old will not be necessary because it's corrupt. Rather, no, before I get to that, it's not necessary because it has served its purpose. It has served its purpose. Namely, the purpose of God in his counsel to execute the counsel for the salvation of his people and the glory of his name, that will be finished. He created this world that there might be a place where Adam would live and fall into sin, where the race would be condemned and go deeper and deeper into depravity to show the dreadfulness of sin. But it would be a place also where there would be a cross planted in the ground and Jesus would be nailed to the cross. This world was made that Jesus might be crucified to redeem God's chosen people. And then the history of this world is executed where God sends forth the preaching of the gospel, calling his people out of darkness, out of every nation and tribe and tongue. But when the elect, last elect is born, and the last elect has been gathered into the church. Why do you need the world any longer? It has served its purpose. It can be burned because there's no need for it any longer. Even the old heaven. The heaven now where Adam and Eve and Abel and David and Solomon are where Jesus sits upon the throne in glory. That too will have served its purpose. And a new <clears throat> heavens and a new earth will someday replace them. So God destroys them because they're old. They have served their purpose. But the second reason is the earthly is corrupt. This whole earth is under the curse of God. It's, it's subject to corruption. And it's subject to corruption because man fell. Man who was created to be king under God, serving God, became an ally instead of the devil. And now he has done everything in his power to take the powers of the creation and press them into the service of sin. And the curse of God is upon the whole of the creation. Death reigns here. Romans 8 said that, that the whole creation is subject to the bondage of corruption. And certainly everything that man has made is defiled, and none of that can enter into the new heavens and the new earth. So it must be burned. The fire must consume it. As we saw in Bible study Wednesday night, Fire is most appropriate because fire not only destroys, fire cleanses. Those that would cleanse the gold and make it to be pure, run it through the fire. 
Those who want to make pure iron run it through the fire to burn away the imperfections and to come out with something that is pure. Fire will consume the heavens and the earth to make them absolutely pure. This, of course, is contrary to all the expectation of men. That we understand. But the very, very sad thing is, this is contrary to the expectation of far too many church men. Those who are post-millennial and look instead for a glorious kingdom where things will get better and better and we can have a glorious kingdom here on this earth. Oh, and then maybe Christ will come way at the end, but most of them expect that the world will be so good by that time that Jesus will want to be king here. It's contrary to the pre-millennialists who say that Jesus will come in a rapture and take his people off the earth, and then there will be seven years of trouble, but at the end Jesus will come and destroy the Antichrist and set up a kingdom on this earth. That doesn't fit with this text. It doesn't fit with the Bible, which says that Jesus, when he comes, will come to burn up the whole of this creation. There will be nothing that Jesus wants to save of all that is here on the earth. He will come with great catastrophe. The heavens and the earth will be destroyed when Jesus comes in that day. The question of Peter now confronts us, seeing you know that, that all of these things will be burned. What manner of person ought we to? to be. It's pretty obvious that in the first place we are a people who do not set our hearts upon this earth or the things of this earth. How foolish would that be when we know they will all be burned up? The world sets its heart upon this earth because that's its hope. That's all they have. Their whole life is geared to obtaining possessions. And even though, though they know the old expression, you can't take it with you, yet they would like to because this is all they have. They hope against hope that when they die, they will have nothing after the grave, that they can enjoy this life to the fullest and then die and be done with it all. That's their hope. And the only thing they can do is maybe put their name on buildings and names on streets and names on lands and names even on tennis shoes in order that when they die, people will say, well, do you remember that man? There's his name. Look at the great things that, they, that he did. Believer who looks about him and says, all of these things will be burned up. Nothing will last. Does not set his heart upon the things that are here below. He doesn't. Oh, the believer uses them. It isn't as if he says, oh, material things are evil in themselves. Others must not go in that direction. We may use things, of course we may. The world has developed many things that can be used and are being used by the church. The computer, the car, the house, the books, the cell phones can be used in the service of Jesus Christ. But they are only means to an end. They're not the end in themselves. We don't seek these things because we love things. We seek to use the things God has given in the service of Jesus Christ. The fact of the matter is, they really aren't of much use at all to us. Ultimately, there's no need for cell phones in heaven. There's no need for a computer in heaven. That's like toys compared to what God will give us in the treasures of heaven. 